150-year-old stained glass window reveals Jesus Christ with dark skin, stirring questions about race. By the Associated Press. Harvard art historian claims 150-year-old stained glass window in Rhode Island Church depicts Jesus as a person of color. The image is made using brown glass and was first spotted by Harvard art historian Hadley Arnold. Arnold has invited art historians and experts to view the window which is thought to be the first to ever depict Jesus as a person of color. Stop the press, stop it. Look at Putin. Putin is showing who the Negroes are. When you go into Russia, they never took our murals down. These murals are from the Black Russian Archives Church that you can see when you go to YouTube. Putin was showing the world who we are. He wanted everybody to see it, but if you notice the American cameras, they took the camera and they dropped it. When you go through all of Europe, all of France, all of Germany, all of Italy, all of Russia, all of the European nations, and the Americas, you're gonna find out something. That the so-called Negroes or Moors, Moors only mean that you're black. Moors ran everything, and a lot of these Moors were Jews. Some were Sephardi Jews, and some of them were, were, were other type of Jews, but these Jews or Israelites ran what you would call the European nations. That's why when you go into Germany, they find bodies that are thousands of years old, and these bodies are so-called Moors. And when they go into Britain, Britain just means sons of Isaac. That's exactly what it means. Britain, when you get a lot of these names as Johnson, um, uh, McKeever and, and McDowell, you would think that these names were actually European. But you got to remember, these people were in the Caucasus Mountains. They didn't even speak English. These so-called Negroes and Moors taught them English, and when they came in, in the later in the 19th century, they basically took over all of Britain, France, Germany, from the 11th century. 19, after the 19th century, they took over everything. And what they did, they came through and they whitewashed everything. So I'm showing you pictures of the ancient nobles here right now as we speak. As a matter of fact, there's a picture here of the painting by Michelangelo, and it's, it's, it's in the 16th chapel, and it's of Joseph and Jacob. Here's another one of Moors fighting what they call wild men. And here's a picture of Robert Pufus by Gene Fawkes, or king. He was a king in Britain, and here are coats of arms. These are different nations of Britain of different people who are Moors. Now, look here, the Holy Roman Emperor. Charles V, isn't this something folks? But get this, look at what we call Columbus. He was a Sephardic Jew. That's why he had to come here because no one else could. Scholars think the window, commissioned in 1877, could be the first of its kind. It should stand as a landmark in American culture, says art historian Virginia Raglin. A nearly 150-year-old stained glass church window that depicts a dark-skinned Jesus Christ interacting with women in New Testament scenes has stirred up questions about race. Rhode Island's role in the slave trade and the place of women in 19th century New England society. A window installed at the long-closed St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Warren in 1878 is the oldest known public example of stained glass on which Christ is depicted as a person of color that one expert has seen. This window is unique and highly unusual. Yeah, it's unusual. It's unusual to them because they've been taught a, a historical narrative that the Hebrews, the Egyptians, the Phoenicians, and all the different Hemetic and Shemitic tribes or quote-unquote white people. Said Virginia Raglin, a professor of humanities emerita at the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. I think the first question that everybody asks is, are that is that color um, in, intrinsic to the way it was constructed? Right. Right? And it was. Yeah. So, yes, they were intentionally um, made with darker skin and lighter hair. Yeah. So, that was intentional. Yes. <laughs> and an expert on the history of stained glass art.
I have never seen this iconography for that time. The 12 foot tall, 5 foot wide window depicts two biblical passages in which women, also painted with dark skin, appear as equals to Christ. One shows Christ in conversation with Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus, from the Gospel of Luke. The other shows Christ speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well from the Gospel of John. The window made by the Henry E. Sharp Studio in New York had largely been forgotten until a few years ago when Hadley Arnold and her family bought the 4,000-square-foot, 371-square-meter, Greek Revival Church building, which opened in 1830 and closed in 2010, to convert into their home. And four stained glass windows were removed in 2020 to be replaced with clear glass. Arnold took a closer look. It was a cold winter's day with the sunlight shining at just the right angle and she was stunned by what she saw in one of them. The human figures had dark skin. The skin tones were nothing like the white Christ you usually see, said Arnold. And that is the problem with American or westernized history. They whitenize or, you know, they like to say Afrocentric, but it's Eurocentric. Okay, they didn't come up with these religions, the belief systems and spirituality. They all stole it from people of color. Who teaches architectural design in California after growing up in Rhode Island and earning an art history degree from Harvard University. Window has now been scrutinized by scholars, historians and experts trying to determine the motivations of the artist. The motive was they probably knew the historical accounts of what the Hamishiach or Hawashai was described in the scriptures, along with the 12 tribes. So these people always want to keep up their historical narrative. It's I'm white and I'm right, right? The church and the woman who commissioned the window in memory of her two aunts, both of whom married into families that had been involved in the slave trade. Is this repudiation? Is this congratulations? Is this a secret sign? Said Arnold. Ragwin and other experts confirmed that the skin tones in black and brown paint on milky white glass that was fired in an oven to set the image were original and deliberate. The piece shows some signs of aging but remains in very good condition, she said. But does it depict a black Jesus? Arnold doesn't feel comfortable using that term, preferring to say it depicts Christ as a person of color, probably Middle Eastern, which she says would make sense. Jesus can't be black. What do you mean he can't be black? He can't be black. Uh, maybe we could make Jesus another color. How about white? But Jesus was black. He could probably do Italian. Jesus was Middle Eastern. In addition to Arabs, the Middle East has always had many people of African descent whom you would consider black. Sorry. So we have the color wars, green and black and purple. The color of an olive is a indication of its ripeness. Green olives ripen and become black olives, or rather they transform from green to light brown, which we will call tawny, to a vibrant red and purple to the deepest, darkest black. Okay. And like he said in the cartoon, it's sad when cartoons give you more truth than some of these f historians. Given where the Galilean Jewish preacher was from, others think it's open to interpretation. The 12 foot tall, 5 foot wide window depicts two biblical passages in which women, also painted with dark skin, appear as equals to Christ. Me, being of African American and Native American heritage, I think that it could represent both people, said Linda Avantiashini, former executive director of the Rhode Island Black Heritage Society. She now runs the Roman Catholic Diocese of Providence's St. Martin Delaware Porus Center, which provides services to older residents. The first time I saw it, it just kind of just blew me away, Avantia Shinny said. Victoria Johnson, a retired educator who was the first black woman named principal of a Rhode Island high school, thinks the figures in the glass are most certainly black. Why do you keep using this Jesus? This is patterned after an image that was created by Warner Selman, 1940 I believe it was. He was asked to create this image so that they could make small uh, wallet sized reproductions of it to hand out to the servicemen. The image was so widely distributed and uh, still is today. It'd be the uh, traditional representation that when people look at it they think well this is what Christ looks like. This is that Satan masquerades as an angel of light and when you look that up in the original Greek it's a word, Greek word that means to disguise. 
So it says Satan is disguised as an angel of light and his ministers are disguised as ministers of justice. And the scripture warns about this deception that's going to come through the Christian religion. This represents the son of perdition because it's really uh, antichrist or imitation. As from the Greek, uh, the word anti can mean instead of or in place of. Black churches don't teach this. It's because they don't want to get in the struggle either. They don't want to make it, quote, unquote, racially motivated. People, this has nothing to do with racially oriented. I'm going to say that again. This has nothing to do with being racially oriented. This is biblical. Amen. I'm going to repeat that. This is biblical. Amen. These are biblical people. If they weren't, why are they in the Bible? If, if God didn't want you to see this, then why did he write it? He did it because it has to do with his story. I'm saying, your forefathers, now walk with me, walk with me, don't miss this. Because 98% of everybody out there believes that their root starts in Africa. So they call themselves black African Americans. And really what they should be talking to themselves is they are what? The Hebrews and the Jews of the original temple of the city of David. And the the Dikenti cloth that you find and that most black culture uses as African cloth is the center cloth that was used in Solomon's temple and his mobile moving tabernacle. So where did you get that cloth from? Moses' mobile moving tabernacle. How did Moses get it? Because he was married to Zipporah and also an Ethiopian woman and etc. Now do you get the picture? Is this some good stuff? So you must take the people back past Africa, past Africa, past Africa. You've got to get them back to the city of David and show them right here that your forefathers, the Queen of Sheba, was already in the city of David at the time of Solomon when the temple was being built. Oh, I don't know about you, but I can get excited about that. It's good stuff. How many of you get this DVD? Can I get a win of somebody? Amen. First Kings 3 1. And Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. I am dark. I am dark. Some versions say black, but lovely. O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon, do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. So the priesthood, and then I turned to my black culture and I said, what? Your bloodline is priesthood? And, and no one told you that? Your bloodline is Priesthood? And, and no one told you that? So we're in Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Sons being plural, right? The sons and daughters of the Most High. Okay? The Most High's chosen people. Now we're at Deuteronomy. Chapter 7, verse 6, for you are a holy people to your Lord, your God, Yahweh. The Lord, your God, has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. So the Most High said he's chosen us to be his own possession. Okay. Now I read Jubilees, chapter 15, verse 29, for the command is ordained for a covenant or testament right? That they should observe it forever among all the children of Israel. Verse 30, for Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau, the Lord did not cause to approach him. And he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, but he chose Israel to be his people. Those being the Negroes, right? Verse 31, and he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations, key words, many nations and many peoples. And all are his 
and over all has he placed spirits and authority to lead them astray from him. For the Most High is a creator. This is a script. We're all characters. We're all trying to figure out what's real and what's not. Who are the main players? Okay. So now we're at Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Key words, create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So the Most High is a director in this main script or in this reality or realm, right? And not to digress too much, but I mean, look at the, the state of America, right? Everyone wants to say, God bless America. But when we look at even, you know, the laws in the Torah or just common or logical sense, you know, why are they creating these certain laws and, you know, agendas for certain demographics? The Most High works in righteousness. So if we're not dealing with righteousness or lying to the people and so forth, he's going to create evil and start all over again and bring his people back into fruition. Right. And we call this the Great Awakening. Right. All this information, you know, and so forth. It's very uh, copious. Right. Everyone's writing books. They're trying to teach. They're trying to educate our people. You have to get it right. We have to live righteous. OK, if not, then the Most High creates evil to wipe out his creation or get rid of the two thirds. Right now we're back at Jubilees, chapter 15, verse 32. But over Israel, that being a people, he did not appoint any angel or spirit for he alone is their ruler and he will preserve them and require them at the hand of his angels and his spirits and at the hand of all his powers in order that he may preserve them and bless them and that they may be his and he may be theirs from henceforth forever. I mean, like not even one sermon with the Holy Ghost. Not one time. Everybody's up. I mean, like it never even crossed their mind. Like I should maybe just mention this. I want to ask you a question. Why, out of thousands and thousands of preachers, would not one in the Holy Ghost have the revelation? Could it be that the presence of this thing that happened in Africa maybe still has some influence that you forget your roots? and not even be interested in it. So we have the book, Babylon, From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor, a history of ancient, quote unquote, black races, including the black Hebrews or just the Israelites. Page 84. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespan and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over a million quote unquote Jews or Judeans fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. And I read Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Key word, other gods. Okay. They just repackaged these gods from ancient Babylonian and ancient Kemet, okay? And Greek and so forth. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone, okay? Most people worship the cross, but that's not a um, commemoration. 
This prophecy and all the residue of the prophecies contained in Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68 befell the black Jews or Judeans after they disobeyed the laws of God. Many nations transported the Jews into slavery and the sons of Israel transmigrated to every continent. Now we're at Order 66. Now we're at the movie Star Wars, right? The Clone Wars or Revenge of the Sith. Order 66, also known as Clone Protocol 66, simply the order was a top secret order identifying all Jedi. And we know who the Jedis are, the ancient so-called black Israelites or Negroes as traitors to the Galactic Republic and therefore subject to summary execution by the Grand Army of the Republic. The Grand Army of the Republic would be the Roman military, right? The order was programmed into the Grand Army clone troopers through behavioral modification biochips implanted in their brains, making it almost impossible for the clones to disobey the command to turn against their Jedi generals. In secret, Order 66 was the means by which the Sith intended to bring about the long awaited fall of the Israelite Order or Jedi Order. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? So you wonder why you're hated. Because it's what's in your blood. See, you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. And God wants to reveal it to you. So this is the movie Star Wars, The Force Awakens. This movie, I believe, came out in 2015, right? And what is the Force? And it states, the Force is a mysterious energy field created by life that binds the galaxy together. Harnessing the power of the force gives the Jedi, or as we know as an Israelite, the Sith and others sensitive to the spiritual energy, extraordinary abilities such as levitating objects, tricking minds, and seeing things before they happen. I think that's clairvoyance. While the force can grant users powerful abilities, it also directs their actions. It has a will of its own, which both scholars and mystics have spent millennium seeking to understand. Now, in the scriptures or the Bible, they call it the Holy Spirit. Some people say the Holy Ghost, but in Hebrew, it's called the Ruach or Ruach HaKodesh. Strong Concordance 7308, Ruach. Origin word in Hebrew, part of speech, noun, feminine. Transliteration, Ruach. Phonetic spelling, Ruach. Definition when spirit in the NASA exclusive concordance Aramaic corresponding to Ruach wind spirit the NASB translation spirit wind and winds the breath of God right but even as I'm telling you it, it no no offense can I just be can I just be friendly even even as I tell the black culture this it's like you know, sh uh, just, you know don't bring it up. And so what I do with my big mouth, I bring it up. Why? Why should you be ashamed of your culture? I, just, I don't understand it. It's not in my logic. Well, you have to think about this because sometimes we have an internal struggle because God's got a repositioning. But every culture God has, and I'm going to teach you, I'm going to share with you, every culture is in the Bible, just like this. But the reason we don't bring it up is because we have been brought up in a democracy slash republic and a democracy slash republic and a religion that doesn't want to discuss this. So we must ask ourselves, why do they not want to talk about it? I mean, we can easily go to Psalms 83, I believe, and it says they made atonement at the nation of Israel, so be no more of a people. So Psalms 83, they have taken crafty counsel against the people and consulted against thy hidden ones. And who are the hidden ones? quote unquote African Americans or the Negroes. They have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. Why you think we have no e-commerce, we have no banks, we have no land, right? That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now some would say, well, Israel was started in 1948, but we have to remember 
Those are not the biblical people. Those are a hybrid or a mixture of many different bloodlines or seed lines that assume the identity of the quote unquote Hebrew Israelite or Israelite or ancient Israelites. But those are not the people of the scriptures. Verse five, for they have consulted together with one consent, meaning it's a conglomerate. It's a group effort, right? They are a confederate against the, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Jeobal and Ammon and Amalek and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Asher also is joined with them. They have hoping the children of Lot, Salah, do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kishon. Verse 10, which perish at Endor, they become as dumb for the earth, which means shit or, you know, feces. The key word, Endor. So now write the strong concordance, 5874. Spring of dwelling, a town in Manasseh. Definition, spring of dwelling, a town in Manasseh. So now we're at 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 7. Then Saul said unto his servant, Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit, that I might go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor. So we know in the movie Star Wars, they have a series called Endor. But we know where they got that from, right? So let's look at the uh, characters that are described on Endor. So now we're at the strong concordance 4519. Manasseh, causing to forget a son of Joseph, that being of the 12 tribes descent from him, also a king of Judah, also two Israelites. Okay. So right here in the Star Wars canon, we have the planet Endor, right? Now, what are the inhabitants of Andor? How are they described? So it says the Andorians were a sentient species from the world Andor. They were distinguishable by their blue skin. I repeat, their blue skin, white hair, and antenna. The Andorian state was the Andorian Empire, one of the founding Federation members. Hmm. So what are they trying to convey or tell us? That this quote unquote, Andorian, which is an Israelite from the tribe of Manasseh, right? A town in, you know, ancient Israel, whatnot. But Negro, it said the meaning African-American vernacular, the English language as spoken by U.S. blacks is from 1704. French Negre is a 16th century borrowing from Spanish Negro. Older English words were more and black and more. A Middle English word for Ethiopian, perhaps also a Negro, generally was blue man or blue man. So this is just black face, okay, or portraying a so-called Negro or a person of color in a blue hue. Because we fear what it will reveal. Because we're into controlling people instead of releasing people. Come on, everybody. Amen.